Hey, what's happening, YouTubers? Welcome to another video here on the Pack Photos YouTube channel. It's no secret in 2023, it was the year of reuse for McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. A line for over the past four years, now going to its fifth year, that has predicated itself on unique body molds and sculpts for each new individual figure introduced in the line. But like I mentioned, last year saw a lot of reuse, especially off of this Blue Beetle Booster Gold body mold, which, don't get me wrong, it's a nice body mold, but we saw it a lot of times over the past year. And of course, we saw our, well, our fair share of the infected Superman body being reused. And of course, with Chad Superman, we saw the Dark Knight Returns body mold return. Now, even though the company has had a lot of reuse over the past year, which, don't get me wrong, I get it, that's the name of the game, the flip side of that is it's also allowed us to have more variety in the line and a more diverse DC Multiverse collection, whereas the first couple of years, one can argue it's primarily Batman. <laughs> But we've seen more diverse characters over the past year, so I guess that's kind of like the trade-off of reusing body molds. But because of the amount of reuse, it kind of wanted me make me go back to year one to kind of really appreciate some of the unique sculpts we got that year. And as you saw in the thumbnail of the title, this is going to be essentially my picks. So there's going to be a couple of picks that you all might have there might be omitted from my list, either because I don't have the figure anymore or because I never had it or I did have it and I sold it but there are gonna be a lot of bangers on this list, so let's get started with one of them right now. Kicking us off, we have the new 52 Red Hood. Introduced at the tail end of 2020, AKA year one of McFarlane Toys having the DC Multiverse license, it was introduced as a single pack and a two pack with Nightwing. Now, I personally never saw this in North America, personally. I lived in Ohio at the time and I also lived in DC. I never once saw this in stores. I eventually caved and ended up buying this on Amazon with a two pack with Nightwing. I think it was going for 70 bucks at the time. Nowadays, this thing is definitely up there in price. It is definitely one of their best sculpts, even up to this day, it's one of their best figures in the line. It just screams Red Hood. That shiny red finish on the helmet is a nice touch. It is also one of the last figures to have guns before the DC gun mandate took effect. And in terms of articulation, I know year one of the DC Multiverse line with McFarlane Toys left a lot to be desired. It still posed fairly well compared to other figures and I think still holds up to this day. And again, this has to be one of my favorite figures from them as it just screams Red Hood. It looks like it popped right straight from the comics. And I say this is probably one of their best figures even till this day. Also because when you look at the aftermarket prices on this, and if you see every Red Hood figure that's come out since, I dare you to find a figure that is better aesthetically than this one right here. Next up, we have the first collect-to-build figure ever from McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line, The Merciless. Now year one in 2020 saw two collect-to-build waves. The first one being the collect-to-build Batmobile, which unfortunately stopped there and According to Todd McFarlane, the reason being is because DC wanted them to shift into a collect-to-build model for figures instead of, a mo instead of a vehicle, which I think worked out well. Now, this figure is a, <laughs> it's a lot of plastic. It is probably one of their best collect-to-build figures, and I find it ironic that it was their first one ever. The amount of sculpt work that was put into this figure looked like it was sculpted by one of the four horsemen themselves. And while articulation leaves a lot to be desired, it still can be overlooked just because of how badass he looks. The sculpt work and intricate paint work on here is fantastic. It's kind of ironic that this is their first collect to build figure and arguably one of their best. And the other thing about this, this is the first time the Merciless has been made in figure form, apart from Beast Kingdom's version. This is still a good figure and holds up in my opinion. The only question now is, do I pick up the Patina version? Because I do like that rustic look to it, but this is still awesome nonetheless. Keeping in within the Dark Knight's Metal, we have the Devastator coming in. It's crazy to me that, you know, at one point Walmart had these retailed for 16 plus, like $16 plus, some change. Like, that's a lot of plastic for that low amount, and that was like less than five years ago. It's wild to think that. Now, I remember when McFarlane Toys acquired the DC Multiverse license, this is like what I had pictured them making, something like monstrositous and so badass like this. The sculpt work screams McFarlane toys. There's a lot of nice detail on this figure. For example, the paintwork of the ripped clothes right here, like the ripped fabric. This was reused as in a, a doomsday figure in the two pack last year with Superman and they didn't paint these parts, which kind of sucks because at 16 bucks, this is what we got. Whereas a doomsday two pack with soups, 
they altered it a little bit and they added another figure and it was like 60 or 70 dollars someone correct me in the comments below but just yeah the amount of detail and work put into this figure is just fantastic and on top of that he had an articulated jaw and the tongue move like that that is insane that's some next level stuff and man this was crazy this this is definitely one of their best figures and not just in year one, but of all time. Somebody in the comments below changed my mind. <laughs> Coming up next, we have the White Knight Asriel. Released in mid-2020 of year one of McFarlane Toys having the DC Multiverse license. I think this version of Asriel doesn't get talked about as much because everyone's clamoring for the new Asriel Batman that's coming out, especially with the recently leaked uh, or recently revealed platinum version of it. And then there was the Walmart exclusive two years ago that my buddy Rob D. Toy took me up with. Shout out to you, brother. But this figure was so incredible and still is. Despite its limitations with single jointed elbows, it still gets a nice, decent range. And the sculpt work is unmatched when you compare it to other figures in the line today. Just the amount, like check this out, if we zoom in closely here, the amount of detail added onto this figure and the different shading of red applied to there, like this wash, it's something we sorely miss and still I feel like we should still be getting today. But nowadays, if you want this type of thing, it has to be like a platinum version. But yeah, this thing is fantastic. The neck kind of worked kind of funny because it was all one sculpt with the head. But it worked in this case because you could definitely hide it during some poses. And yeah, just the way they're able to sculpt these so that his cape or these little strips right here stick up. Kind of Mr. Sinister-esque style. Just, man, something about this figure is so underappreciated in my opinion just when you look at the nice details and the paint application applied throughout like even Rob Liefeld would love these pouches like look even the pouch like the the nice attention to detail the paintwork right here the wash on the on the pouch like this is just one of those figures that I feel like doesn't get it's just due and credit but here I am celebrating it because this still holds up today as one of their best figures in addition to that just aesthetically, it looks like it was pulled directly from Sean Gordon Murphy's artwork. Marching his way up next, we have the Hellbat figure. This was in wave one of the DC Multiverse line, and a lot of people's consensus as like the best figure in wave one. Some could argue Action Comics 1000 Superman, but I still think this is probably their best one. This and let's say the Unchained Armor Superman. These are one of those, this and that figure I should say, are those prime examples of McFarlane toys doing deep cut characters that have never been done before. And I know McFarlane likes to brag that this was only featured in one panel or it was the Unchained Armor one. But yeah, this is probably one of their standouts in wave one. I say one of, because you're gonna find out here in a little bit why, but this thing was all sorts of badass. <laughs> and the funny thing about this one is, uh, or the cool fun fact is, I believe this was my homie, the Broken Bats first DC Multiverse figure. Uh, shout out to you, brother, and happy belated birthday. But this figure just stands out because you could have used him in your Mattel line as well just because he scaled, I would say, fairly well with those Batman figures because he's supposed to be in an armored suit. While articulation was limited, there's no doubt the sculpt work was fantastic. And as you can see, I put a soft goods cape on here, but there are two retractable pieces that you can attach to the back that will act as the wings. And the cool thing about that is that there is a hinge on there so you can actually fold them in that it makes a bat. But yeah, definitely one of my favorites from the line. Now remember how I said that Hellbat was one of my favorites from Wave 1? This is my ultimate favorite one from Wave 1 of the DC Multiverse line in Year 1. That's right, the Batman Who Laughs, part of the first collectibuild wave from the line, which was the collectibuild Batmobile. I believe this came with the right side of the Batmobile. Some of the comments below can correct me, but this is my favorite on for like a lot of reasons. One of the main reasons, this head sculpt. Now the whole idea or the design aesthetic of the Batman Who Laughs is just so wild and out there and I think it was captured very well in figure form for McFarlane Toys and for this being their first venture into making DC figures, I'd say they nailed it and knocked it out of the park with this figure. Just look at the sculpt and paintwork of his teeth, like look at the red paint around his lips, like, like the smudging, like this looks insane and the kind of like rustic look on his like eyes and <laughs> the spikes and this cowls here. This just looks freaking awesome. Now, 
speaking of like sick and twisted, when you look or just yeah, look at the overall aesthetic of the Batman who laughs, it's kind of reminiscent of Hellraiser, which was produced by Clive Barker, which Clive Barker partnered with McFarlane Toys to make the Tortured Souls. He kind of has that aesthetic. So it's it's kind of like blending the best of what McFarlane Toys was known for early on with sculpt work and design and putting it into figure form with articulation. And speaking of articulation, this was one of the first figures that had that rubber overlay, which earlier on the rubber overlay were incredibly thick, so it did hinder a lot of the movement in the torso, but he still had double joint elbows and double joint knees. The only thing that kind of was a drawback were like the, the shoes kind of didn't lay flat, but I could look past that because just the amount of attention to detail and the work they put in this figure is unmatched. The cool thing that I really liked about this, when I first got this figure in hand or I first saw it, the solicitation pictures they were offering for this photo figure on Amazon, this showed me that McFarlane Toys was serious about the DC Multiverse line doing a figure or a figure that of a character that had never been made in figure form and just the amount of attention and detail and work put into this. Like this is honestly still up there along with that Asriel as one of my favorites from the line so far. So there you have it YouTubers, just a handful of figures. I wanted to showcase some of my favorite sculpts and figures from McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line year one. And while I'm on the topic of this, not to sound cynical or anything like that, just kind of bring more awareness like in my opinion, I am excited for the brand and the line and where it's going. However, I look at these figures and kind of hope and stay optimistic that, you know, it would be nice if we got this a little bit more consistent again, like where we had more unique sculpts and where we had more attention to detail to paint work. And I know unique sculpts cost a lot of money, so maybe not so much of that, but just more attention to detail like paint work on specific parts of the figure. That, I think, would go a long way in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I still appreciate the brand, but while I'm here highlighting and you know giving recognition to year one of the line, I also want to highlight some dudes in the toy photography game that helped propel the brand in year one. People like Plastic RG and Ty Butler who really helped kickstart the toy photography side of the DC Multiverse line. But yeah, let me know in the comments below, YouTubers, what are some of your favorite figures in year one of the DC Multiverse line? Sound off the comments below. Like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Now go home and smoke some more crack.